Kumia is a kupukubo kaaina that hails from the outer island of Oahu in the Ahupua'an village of Waianae. He is the grandson of Tutuulu and Kupunakane Alika and the grandson of Abuelita Macy. Did I say that right? Okay, good. And Jeepa James, no, Grandpa James. Lelemia is the son of Al and Jamie Irvine. He's the proud 1997 graduate of Lemoku Elementary and 1999 graduate of Waianae Intermediate School. <laughs> After graduating high school from Kamehameha Schools, Kokoa Campus in 2003, he attended the University of Hawaii at Manoa Campus where he earned his Bachelor's of Science in Biological Engineering in 2009 and Master's of Science in Biological Engineering in 2011. He has a minor certificate degree in Spanish language, as well as holds an engineering and training distinction, which makes him one step closer to becoming a licensed professional engineer. Wow. Let me, I know right now. Yeah. <laughs> He's currently pursuing his PhD in civil and environmental engineering with a focus on water sustainability, or as he writes it, sustainability. Sustainability. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, he's training as a doctor of engineering that will become a practitioner of water farming. Wonderful. Yep. Awesome. Okay. That's a big thing. Yeah. Aloha, my kako. Aloha. Ea vainu yaki. Vai nui, vai ki, vai loa, vai pogo, vai luna, vai lalo. I loko ka moano ka na loa, ue ka lani na ue ka honua, ne e ka honua, ula i ka honua, ho ola ka honua. Ku ka vai urua o ke kupuna. Ku paa ke kanaka mauli, ki he mauli ola. Aloha. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I'm Lele Mia. How are you folks? Um, that chant was Ea Hawai'i Nui Akea, and I learned that through um, my kumu mehana o kala hind at the University of Hawai'i at Manoa. And one way that I was taught to use it as is to introduce ourselves as our genealogy. This is Hawaii Nui Akea. Uh, most of us in this room are um, Native Hawaiian, part Native Hawaiian, and also from other parts too. Um, and want to acknowledge our ancestors and call them out. Um, actually, a part of it talks about water, and I want to be, I'm training to be a water farmer. Um, so, Olaika Vayako Pua, there's life in the water from the clouds. So today, I'm going to talk about the water cycle but before I talk about that, I actually want to talk about who I am. And since we're a brother and sister team, can I call my sister up? <laughs> we're going to actually introduce ourselves to you folks. So this is Aaliyah. This is my sister. But before we um, continue with the presentation, um, we actually want to first thank Huli Ko'a Kaya'ulu, Hawai'i Nui Akea, Ma'o Farms, and Kamehameha Schools for the privilege and honor um, and putting out the kahea for us to come here. Um, and it's a really, a truly an honor and blessing to be with you folks in the room because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you folks. And then we also want to thank um, all the ones that are wearing kukui net lays are our ohana, and that's our mom. So you can say hi to them. <laughs> um, so today's presentation is about science and engineering pathways for advancement. Many of you have um, mo'opuna, um, keiki, those are rising up the younger generation and we're going to tell you about our story of how we um, got our degrees. Um, first it starts with the upbringing, those with the kukui nut lays that have been there since we were baby in our baby days. Um, but after that we graduate high school, right, we puka and so thank you Ileana for the introduction. There's many different pathways you can choose to go to work or whatever. Um, we chose a different path. Um, there's scholarships out there available for you and you can see in the handout that we've given to you folks that you can um, look those up. There's also community college, that's a pathway to consider. Um, lastly, Ileana talked about graduate school. So after you get your undergraduate degree, you can go to graduate school, you can go to professional school. Um, professional school is like 
the lawyers, um, medical doctors, veterinarians, um, dentists, and so forth. Um, but Ali and I were choosing to go to graduate school. Um, there's specific reasons why you'd want to go for a graduate degree. Um, one, for a master's degree, it's kind of required so that you can get an expertise into something. Um, many jobs now for our generation and for their generation is going to be the new standard. Um, as for the PhD, I want to be a professor and want to teach the next generation of engineers. So that's why I would want to go into a PhD field. And some PhD um, fields require that high level of technical knowledge to be able to solve certain problems or be able to be there for the community. Mm -hmm. So it's between us and you. Um, for us, we're, after that, it's, we should be enjoying life through the whole time. So this is a hua ka'i. Eo? Ai? Eo. Um, we're going to talk about our kūpuna, where we came from. Um, pictured, this is um, Aaliyah. <laughs> That's me. That's my mom. She's right there. That's my dad right there in the blue. He just entered. <laughs> That's when he was younger. Um, way younger. Um, this is us when we, Aaliyah and I, Aaliyah was an intermediate, I was in high school. Um, we grew up in Waianae. Um, that's, this is on Wai'anae Valley Road. Um, we'll talk about what schools we went after, but we, we, we're from here too. Um, we're going to talk about our dad's side. Um, want to talk about that? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, we love our family. Our family actually is also from this side too. Our roots are from Hawaii Island, and our Hawaii Island Ohana is here with us today. Um, and this is all of them, we enjoy to play music. Um, we like to kani kapila a lot. <laughs> we love to go to the beach, as you can see. We go to um, Pokai Bay a lot, play music. Did you say his name? I didn't hear. Oh, Kalamai. Um, we like to go to Pokai Bay a lot with our ohana. Um, and our dad, my dad's Alfred. Um, you can see all of the wahine, they keep it strong for us. Um, and then we also are into genealogy and with our family and learning about who we are and our identity as um, not only Kanaka Hawaii but Kanaka in general and thank you auntie <laughs> she's right there um, this is our mother's side of the family um, my mom she's from California and this is her um, grandmother so our great-grandmother and this is my mom's mom Abuelita and this is Bis Abuelita. And so we come from a beautiful family just like everyone else and we're very fortunate and honored that they're here. And m much of our Ike and our skills that <coughs> about presenting and being here actually stems from what came from what you folks have taught us, from church, from home, and those other things <laughs> when we get in trouble. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk about my science pathway. The, thank you, Leah. Give her a hand. So she, She's going to start her presentation for the next one from here. Now you have an idea, because we come from the same stock. And we're brother and sister. We're very peely. We're very close, if you don't know already. Um, These are good friends. Um, this is Fina. She's right over there. And the, there's Terry. Um, you meet a lot of people. And that upbringing actually prepares you to meet these people. Uh, Fina is um, Kiwi, but Tongan. Um, so I went to Lehoku Elementary. I graduated in 97. Um, I was a gymnast. I loved to do gymnastics and tumbles. So maybe you can see why I got the lele part <laughs> of my name. Um, then I went to Waianae Intermediate. I've been playing the flute since I was eight. And um, I'm almost 29 next week. <laughs> so that you could do the math. Um, <laughs> But I graduated in 99, and, and when I was an intermediate, I played for the high school band for Waianae High School, so I know a number of the older generation um, from the band. Um, I was fortunate to go to Kamehameha School's Kapa'alama campus. Um, this is our 10-year reunion last year. Um, we were having a talent show, and so our only talent was to walk. So we knew how to walk, so we did a fashion show. <laughs> <laughs> but we won for yeah. class spirit. But this is me actually graduating um, 11 years ago. Um, as you can see, I put on some weight. <laughs> it happens. 
<laughs> but I'm healthy. Um, so I did, um, after graduating from school, I went um, directly into my undergrad. Um, I was very fortunate. Um, I actually applied for only three schools um, because th that was the only three fee waivers that were available when I was in high school. Um, and we couldn't afford it um, to apply to other schools. So I applied to Boston University, the University of Hawaii at Maunoa, and I also applied to Hanover College. Um, I got into Hanover College um, in Indiana, and they gave me a flute scholarship, and I would have been a musician. And then um, University of Hawaii at Maunoa, I got in for biological engineering because um, I was interested in that. And two people that are very instrumental in me going into my field are actually my teachers from intermediate is Mr. Thomas in eighth grade. He ran biology classes and he took me to the side and taught me to do my own science experiments and I went to science fair and got second place. And so he said you should go into engineering and I didn't know what that meant. And then in 10th grade, I had chemistry with Mr. Kim. So I don't have pictures of them, but I would like to honor them. Um, these people are very special, and they probably don't realize that they've touched my life. Uh, Mr. Kim taught me how to speak science is life. Um, and he used metaphor in his way that I was able to absorb the lessons because chemistry involves a lot of chemical reactions, right? right. <laughs> Just like going to the bar and trying to find a right person or right beer or whatever and so those they really engendered me or encouraged me to go on to um, this path and so um, the College of Tropical Agriculture called me back because I didn't understand my financial aid package at the time so the one thing I learned is don't be afraid to ask questions because especially encourage the ones that are 16, 17, 18 years old that at 18 you're 18 you're adults the university sees you as an adult um, to ask those questions and so I did ask those questions and I was able to go to school and they put me in the right place at the right time to the right people to the right scholarships and everyone can get a scholarship because I wasn't a 4.0 student for sure. <laughs> um, normally a bachelor's degree takes how many years? Four. Anyone know how long I took? More. Six and a half years. I took six and a half years to do my undergraduate degree. Um, one of my mentors is here that really helped me along the way. And instrumental is actually Dr. Hailani Chang. She, she, so thank you. She ran a minority program and it actually helped me. And I'm gonna actually talk about research, um, doing internships. So one way to pay for school is to do internships and find what your passion is. And my passion was water. It's always been around us, my dad does surfing or um, boogie boarding, my sister. We were around the water with the beach. I'm more of a Malka person instead of a Makai person, but I still appreciate and had this fondness for the water. Um, so scared, no scared, you're all in because you have to pay for it somehow. Um, I, ke I commuted every day from Waianae to the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So it can be done. So, and trust me, there's some in the room, right? <laughs> HPU, we were on the bus together. <laughs> but it can be done, like, and the, the bus community, so if you folks ride the bus, thank you, because you actually encouraged me to want to do more, and you folks would just listen to us, or we listen to you. Um, this is my pathway in engineering. What is engineering, anyone know? In simple terms, any? Pardon me? How stuff works. Actually, that's the best explanation. This is the Oxford English Dictionary. The British wrote this. Um, but that's the fancy definition. But it basically, how stuff works. I'm interested in solving real world problems as an engineer. Does anyone know Mako'olelo Hawaii, the word for engineer? Anybody? Aole? How about when you, tea leaf, what are you doing? What kind? Nahaku, the other one, vili, and the vili style, the vili ki. So vili ki is the Hawaiian word for engineer. That's the root word. So that's why I like wearing tea leaf lays, because I feel like I'm wearing <laughs> an engineer. Um, there's several types of engineers, but we'll talk about that later. I'm also, I'm a human being, and 
we're deeply rooted as kukupu ka'aina of Waianae in our culture. I don't really need to explain what that is because that's what we do. Um, just, there's many words for that. You folks know that. Naike amena hana and all these other ways of explaining what we just do is how we live. Um, I wanted to explain environment. In the Hawaiian context, there are many ways to, do, um, to explain what environment means. And that was really interesting to me because in um, engineering, it's a little bit more categorized. And I'll explain what the mana'o behind that is. Um, in terms of Hawaii Ike, or the Hawaiian way of looking things about the environment, it's very genealogical. Hanau ka'aina, hanau ke ali'i, hanau ke kanaka. So the hanau, birth was the land. Hanau, birth was the ali'i. Hanau, birth was the kanaka. Even within our other chants, like, hanau kamuku a kupu alao lo ao mo. Kamuku luna hawai, hawai ne kamuku hebala, vakai hanaka hawai lava. That chant, you know, the islands were born. So it shows that there's this relationship between man and land, and land came first. So it's kind of a reciprocal relationship. If we were to compare, and it's in, you folks know, I don't need to explain, it's always documented, like Dr. Isabella Abbott says it, my auntie then, my family says it. This is what I learned at home. Um, but this is what they were able to document f for a message for the next generation that might not be able to have that connection. Um, from an engineering lens, we look at um, environment as a life support system. So we look at it as air, water, or food, the three things. That, that's what the land can give to me. So it's like, what can it give to me? And then, whoops. Um, from a technological, environmental control perspective, what can I do to control it? So that was the kind of mana'o that I was trained as an engineer, but it's being changed. But this is kind of a common thing about engineering. So you can see that there's a culture clash. So many of our students that go into engineering will have to learn to walk both worlds. I'm just letting you know up front, this is what I had to overcome for myself. Um, so what was, what's the difference? Anyone know? The emphasis. Yep. Aina first. Aina first not us and that's like duh but i just wanted to bring that out there and share it to everybody and let it be said i'm a phd student and went through it for 11 years um, it took me going through the process um, but you know it's changing and that's why we need us here so we can change that and be able to be a bridge between the two um, i was very fortunate through like programs with dr hale lunny to travel the world this is my facebook by the way <laughs> Um, and you want to know how many countries I've been to that don't know me? A lot. I've been to 19 countries. Not on my money. So they pay for your school. You have to apply for it. So I applied to these summer programs. As you can see in the back, there's NSF REU, Research Undergr Experience for Undergraduates. But makahana kaike. So you can be in the classroom, but I felt like it's time to go out the door. So when I went out the door, I was able to learn even more. So um, in my undergrad, I was fortunate to go to Costa Rica in 2005, where I learned about ethnobotany, how to be an a indigenous person or a native person, and then a scientist, and walk those two worlds, as well as visit indigenous cultures that are suppressed, even more suppressed than us. And then to see what they do to ho'i ho'i ka'ea, ho'i ho'i. Yeah, right, to return, to return their, their, their essence, their, their personal individual sovereignty. Um, that following month later, so I was there for about two months for that program, then I went for five months at Earth University. And at Earth University, I studied El Manejo de Desechos. Anyone know what that means? El Manejo de Desechos. Waste management. So um, I was fortunate to get a, um, a fellowship to go full ride. Um, and how that happened was I actually asked a question. I really wanted to go to Iraq or <laughs> Alibaba or someplace because it was just so interesting. However, it wasn't legal at the time for, oh, well, the UH didn't want us to go there because apparently it was too dangerous. But I was willing to go anyway. And so I asked them, <laughs> is there anything with Spanish and engineering? and they actually had a program and i went on my own and the lady mentored me how to write so writing's an important skill 
to tell your personal story. So I'm telling you, conveying you a message and to know who you are as a, a person, your child of God or, you know, all that. So there I learned about waste management because I was interested in it. And actually there's a genealogical reason why for that because my family does that. And I didn't know that until learning more. Um, coming home, I was in Dr. Um, Helene Chang's program where I worked with biosensors. And you have to present your work. So, you know, you do all this hana hana, makahana ke ike, makahana ke, and then you have to do, oh, I got a ho ike to show. Um, so I've presented some of my work. This, this, the fancy title for it with biosensors, so it was ter temperature control of a disposable DNA electrode. So what we're looking at is these DNA electrodes were like copy machines. And how can we improve the copy machine so that it can allow us to amplify more DNA? And so we were doing the engineering side. So the engineering side is figuring out the properties and making it work. So make, that's make things work. Thank you, Auntie, for saying that at the beginning. That's what engineers do. Um, I also was able to travel even more. I've been to many places where I was asked to also work in groups where we worked on watershed issues. Um, we live in an amazing watershed in Waianae. Is there water? Yes. yes. We need to manage it. There's plenty of water. So the skills you learn at the university can be applied back home. Um, I was fortunate to go away to um, the University of Notre Dame um, where I studied um, microbiology because I wanted to learn how to um, do water quality and assess the microbes in it. So you had to learn different techniques to do it. So I studied mosquitoes. And when I, in the fancy title that I said was creating antibodies against the rhodopsin visual proteins in the mosquito. And the whole point was is that we were trying to make, so this, we were making art, really we were. Um, we would dissect the mosquito and make, um, and then go through this entire process so that they could phosphoresce and see in the eye. Because we wanted to understand some of the visual cues, because the visual cues connected to how they were attracted to bite humans. Where, where would have mosquitoes be a large problem? Water. Water places. Water. We're standing water because of malaria in Af Africa, as well as a whole slew of other diseases. So um, those who have kids that are interested in art might actually want to consider doing microbiology. Um, we have one of the best um, scan electron microscopy labs in the world and they're known to use our pictures in textbooks they're known to use our pictures like these into um, also calendars so you can visually see what the small small things are big but it's super small um, I also was fortunate in the end of my undergrad to go visit Germany where I studied um, water treatment do you know where this is anybody Rhine, 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 Rhine yes Rhine River. Rhine River in Dusseldorf there's Dusseldorf, if you don't know, right here. Western. Um, actually, I was staying in Dresden, so we had to go a long way, like six or seven, eight hours. I fell asleep. So I fell asleep. Um, but we were studying riverbank filtration, so this is a schematic. So what we do as engineers is like we also like to draw things, so, or even architects, we like to draw things, they like to draw things. And what we're trying to do is to mimic what's happening in the real world. What are the processes going on? And what there was, this you can see is a pumping, a pump. Um, what we do is we abstract the extraction well, we pump water through it, and it, it pumps into, it's collected into pipes and then goes into a water um, treatment plant. And this part right here allows for um, physical, chemical, and biological treatment to occur so that the water is much more higher quality than drinking surface water straight. And they figured that out like in 1800s, early 1800s to mid 1800s, and it's the technology that they used in Germany as, as well as all the European countries from Czech Republic on the Rhine River. Very common solution. So this is what they used to solve it. Um, what we do in engineering, we observe things. So we use meters, and we use meters to um, actually measure like temperature, depth, we use these parameters to answer certain questions. What's happening? How is the water moving? What, um, 
what's going on, those types of things. And those numbers, we, we use um, basics, so your papaku, the foundation, and the fundamentals from engineering to answer these questions. I won't go into that, but <laughs> I was fortunate to travel because I made a lot of friends in school, and I went to Romania right after that. And this is me being greeted traditionally um, by a Romanian family, my family. And we, when I first landed and got out of the airplane, they go, um, this is how we, um, your US president, we greeted your US president when they came to um, Romania. We break bread and then we dip it in salt, we throw some in the back and then we eat. So it's very similar, you know, cultures where we, food's important. I ate a lot and gained a lot of weight. <laughs> Over here is a picture. Um, my friend said that um, King Kalakawa, he did a world voyage, right? Um, he actually visited Romania and there's no documentation, but they were saying in this, the curator is like, yes, he did visit here. That's what the Olalo was. And when you go into that um, palace, it looks like our palace. So you can see where the innovation comes from. And the running pipes, AC, <laughs> um, sewage system, telephone, electricity. We're, um, our people are innovators. It was interesting to see that in the past come back to life. I never knew that about myself. Um, I would encourage your, you can go to these places and find a way to get it paid for. There's ways. I also visited friends in Spain and my friends, we went to see like, this is Madrid and this is his home. And they showed me a good night out. <laughs> that was the, that's when the camera broke. <laughs> um, and then just monuments that are important to them. This is Don Quixote's story. Um, I would just show you a little bit. I'm uh, very interested in waste and wastewater. So I did studies. I did the H&L um, waste audit study. Um, I've done other research. This is to give you an idea that you do small projects to build to something bigger. And you decide later what you want to do for your masters. And I graduated. So in 2009. So it took me six and a half years. It can, can do, as long as you get it done, right? And enjoy the ride. So what I learned was dream big. I did dream big. And it can be done. You know, God moves mountains. And you are your biggest promoter. Your, bigger pr your biggest promoter is yourself. Um, some, it's very uncomfortable because being from Y&I and I, being from a family where we value ha'a ha'a and being humble, I wasn't accustomed to students next to me just go getting it. And so I had to learn the art and skill and craft of still being humble as a individual, as a Native Hawaiian, part Native Hawaiian, as well as what my mom is. Um, and how can I respectfully approach a person and still say I'm interested in your program? Are there any? So you develop that olelo. Um, once you do that and just get out, break yourself from that mold, I would encourage that to the next generation as you folks mentor them. That really, that's what I've noticed. It makes it happen and you enjoy the ride. And the other thing is always to document. So as you see, I have all these pictures. Share your stories. Please share your stories. This is part of your genealogy. Um, and they become the genealogists. We all will become a genealogist at time to share that part of your story. Um, I'm almost a professional engineer. I'm working towards it. So those who want to go into engineering, um, at UH we have five. Civil engineering, mechanical, computer, biological, and ocean. Um, it typically takes four years, but it took me six and a half. You got it. But you can do it in five, you can do it in six, so it's quite normal. After that, you need to take this eight-hour test called the FE, or Fundamentals of Engineering. It's pass or fail. No grade, just pass or fail. And it's actually based off of the national average, so you have to beat everybody. And um, it's a serious test. It's eight hours long. You go over early in the morning all the way to the end. That was really fun. <laughs> I passed, and then... <coughs> You work in a company for four years. There's, if you go to graduate school, the numbers change. But you need four years of experience. So masters would count for one, and then a PhD, and then there's ways to go about that. And then you take another eight-hour test to be a licensed engineer. Pass or fail, but you have to beat everyone. 
But that's good. That's part of the process because if your calculations are wrong, what I learned is someone can get hurt. So I'm very supportive of the system. So now you know that it's rigorous. Does anyone know how many types of licenses there are? Can you, engineers? For engineers, yeah. There's how many engineering licenses you can get? There's di or there are options. So there's different options. So I said there's five um, degree programs, but there actually are more types of engineering types. Do you know how many types of engineers there are? 28 is close. It's 26. So you, people specialize. So I become a civil engineer. I only can do, um, give you a stamp on civil engineering. Mechanical, only a stamp on mechanical. So I can't stamp off something for nuclear energy. Marine software systems. There's different <coughs> types. <coughs> I use Wordle to visually make this, so you can be creative. Um, I went to graduate school immediately after my undergrad. Um, you don't have to go to that, but I did because it was an opportunity that presented itself and it was paid for. Typically, it's paid for, for if you go in science or engineering. Um, I did it in two. Um, for my master's, and then I'm in my PhD, so it takes I don't know how long. But you have seven years. <laughs> you have seven years to do it. I'm anticipating it'll take me five. I'm in my year three right now, so I have two or three more years to go. Um, now I'm going to talk about, that was my pathway to get to where I met to my PhD. And those life experiences combined actually made me interested into water, the engineered hydraulic cycle. I needed to learn all these life skills about the different processes of how water flows. Um, you may have heard about, you've seen this picture, water goes from the heavens down. One Hawaiian view, or Papukumakavalu, that I learned at the university, that water is like Papuhulilani, Papuhulihonua, Papuhanaomoku, there's different realms. The Lani's Papuhulilani is the realm of the sky, the Papahulihonua, they talk about different processes for the earth. Papahanao Moku is about the birthing processes. Just give an idea that there's other ways to look at it, but I'll leave it to the professionals in those fields to share that. But I recognize that. Um, in the Hawaiian worldview, we have um, Aiha Kawaiakane, this chant um, that was written. This is only an excerpt of it. and. In our chants, in our dances, we actually, as Native Hawaiians, documented our view of the hydraulic cycle. If anyone knows it, I would love to learn it. But I've read on the literature about it, and it comes from um, unwritten histories. It's from Kauai. Very interesting. It's longer. Um, but we have that knowledge stored into us. So encourage the bridging of not only being um, an engineer, but also, or a scientist, but being Hawaiian or being Cherokee, Chamorro, Tongan, all your other roots, Spanish. When I do engineering in Spanish, I did it in Spanish in Costa Rica. And when I did it in Spanish in Costa Rica, I thought differently. It felt different. So being able to access those different perspectives is really good. Um, in terms of engineering, that what we learn, um, you folks know this. We catch the water, so the water is either taken from surface water, like you know the Rhine River, directly, or it's pumped, how we have the aquifer systems. Um, then it goes to a water treatment process like the Board of Water Supply. Um, board of Water Supply either adds chlorine, or they do something, add fluorine. It depends on where you are. And then the water is distributed to us, and we all use it for whatever reason. We already know what we use it for. We either use it to drink, we use it to go to the bathroom, um, lawn, everything. Then that water is recollected. Do you folks know how many miles? Can you guess how many miles of pipes we have? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. <laughs> and then it goes, flows 2,000 miles. Um, we had go into our wastewater treatment processes. Um, we only depend on, it depends where the water goes to, we have seven or nine wastewater treatment plants on island. There's different processes, primary, secondary, tertiary, advanced. It's telling you the water quality, so primary only wants to take out um, big things, nutrients. Um, secondary, it's more nutrient, biological treatment, 
tertiary, you get into the smaller organisms and, and advanced treatment like part um, pharmaceutical wastes. Um, that water generally can be um, returned into the natural cycle. So this part here, this is what I mean, this is engineered. Us humans redid it. Um, because of population increase, we had to think of ways to mimic, mimic what nature does. And that's what we've done. You can directly recycle that water into the system if it was clean. They do that in Singapore. They do that in um, Namibia. They do it in many places. Um, or you can turn it to receiving body water, such as aquifer recharge. In California, they do aquifer recharge so that the salt water lens is more down and not up. Um, as well as, or into straight into the ocean, that's what we do. Which is okay, because it's actually a high quality effluent that's better than um, direct. So we treated it. We took care of it. Um, so like I've been saying, I study water quality, and I also study water availability. Um, why I study that is because I've noticed that um, the science literature is calling about, you hear climate change, all these things. Now your mind starts thinking, oh, we live on an island. How are we going to get our water? These are the questions that everyone in our family talks about it. I kind of wanted to know, okay, let's do it. Let's figure it out with what limited resources we have. Let's figure it out. Um, this is my um, professor, Dr. P. Y. Yong. He was my mentor for my master's, so I learned about biological treatment. Um, he developed a technology called Entrapped Mixed Microbial Cell, or EMMC for short. And he used little microorganisms, encapsulated them, so he just clumped them together through a, um, a natural process, put them into a trash can, which is what we call a bioreactor, the fancy way, pump water through over a period of time to treat the water. So this is what the EMMC technology looks like had to cover it because of proprietary purposes. Sorry. <laughs> you can get patents and stuff. But it's all about the journey. These people all helped me along the way. You learn technical skills. Um, I learned how to treat different types of wastewater. And then I was able to go to Taiwan in my graduate degree program and to study gray water recycling for island communities and look at different ways of using biological treatment coupled with membrane technologies. Um, we ate a lot in between our experiments. That's really important. A lot of water, right? A lot of soup. Good food. And then we also, um, I, lab life is different there. And I got to see how they um, integrate their culture um, with their way of doing engineering. My favorite part is taking off your slippers. <laughs> and they also celebrate like their traditions. So during certain moon month that, that I was there, um, they were giving offerings to the dead, which was very interesting. To, I never seen that before. Um, but the science of it, that all was going on with the science. And then the science, I learned how to um, use to compare different um, methods. So we tested like the biological treatment, EMMC technology by itself. We tested the micro um, filtration membrane technology by itself and then we did it in process so we just tested three different trials using gray water and we made up the gray, wa gray water um, based off of literature so you read different literature around the world um, and then you just observe what's happening um, I'm not going to explain the graphs but things happen but the results were pretty interesting we got 90 percent removal so it achieved what we wanted um, in terms of um, Organics were removed. Organics are important because it can choke the water, um, cause eutrophication and alia stuff on corals, and it has an impact on our coral reefs. And you always have to present your work. So I presented my work at the Hawaii Water Environmental Association conference, which is our water conference happening this week. So I'll have to go there tomorrow. And um, Currently, for my PhD, I'm not going to talk about that, but that was like my research background that I've done. Um, I do rainwater harvesting. I'm learning to be um, a rain farmer, a water farmer. Um, so we used, we catch rain from the rooftops. This was at a friend's house. Um, and in 30 minutes, I got like 20 gallons of water. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of water. Um, that's 
I didn't, that's just from straight, there's no gutter system. Like straight from the roof. Just straight from the roof. So if there was a gutter system, there would be more because that's a huge um, area. And so it's really interesting. This is um, not a new technology. This is an old technology. So um, engineers, we always are reflective and we always want to look back what our kupuna have done. So please don't, please share the stories, especially what um, we're interested in learning too is what have we've done in the past during your lifetime, if you've used rainwater catchment systems, um, how we can improve the design. We used rainwater catchment system when I grew up. Oh yeah. And that was the only drinking water we had. And the filter was just a little um, um, screen on the top. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the dual borrowed bag. So when you open the faucet, it filters the water mm -hmm. from the inside. But we didn't have any other thing to put in the water like they do today, chlorine. Yeah, chlorine. No, it was just plain rainwater. Rainwater, straight rainwater. And this is awesome. These are stories we're actually going to write for that. And we would love to talk to you. I have my contact information, see if folks want. <laughs> um, but I'm going to talk about um, some of the hurdles to pursuing a STEM degree for underrepresented minorities. Um, no shame ask. That I learned. Um, if I don't speak up, I don't know. <laughs> and the other pivotal thing is finding mentors like Dr. Hailani Chang. She really helped me mentor me through the process. People have done it before. Um, she's definitely a lehulu for her generation. Um, I also mentor, so you become the mentor. So I mentored my three, these were my three first students I really, really mentored, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Loke Lani, she's from Kauai. Brandon Santiago, Santiano, he's from Eva Beach. And then Kamu Wala, you know, he's from Hawaii Island, Kona area. And she has a job, he's about to finish with his civil engineering, about to finish with his microbiology degrees. So they were young, a couple of years, it took a couple of years. Um, and we always live with, we always want to enjoy life. We always mentor them. You know, this is a process. Enjoy it. Because um, I know it's a lot of students, they pound their heads. Some strategies for success is perceived difficulty of a degree. It's never, it's never hard. I never use that word. I, I'm a teaching assistant, so I ask my students not to use the word. This is hard. And you can say it's easy, but it takes work. Um, but it's better to trick your mind. I trick myself into that. Um, funding is always an issue. Who wants money to go to school? Who has the money to go to school? Yeah. So that's the question. There's financial aid. And then there's a whole ton, a ton of opportunities for Native Hawaiians to go. There's Kuana Native Hawaiian Student Services. Um, I actually go on Google um, and spend like two hours a week and I mine for it. And you look, you have to understand the system. So one is to look at Kamama schools. One is to look at OHA. And then you start looking at these people, and then they will have all these opportunities. You want your, um, to go on listservs. So if you have an email, that's really awesome. And what the listservs do is they send you opportunities. And it just keeps coming. And I, I'm open to that because you don't know what comes in your inbox because I've traveled many places because of that. Um, because it related to or connected to my interests of study. And also, there's scholarships available. I'm going to pass it on to the next person. Um, listservs and then just perseverance, asking a lot of people and being nice about it. Very pleasant. Um, this was my first day as a PhD student. Uh, that's me 30 pounds ago. <laughs> 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 this is a picture of my professor. This is Dr. Oceana um, Puananile Francis. She's the first female Native Hawaiian engineer faculty at the College of Engineering at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Thank you. Yes. Um, she's been really pivotal. Um, I actually switched advisors. So um, I would talk story more deeply when you're at that stage, but I'm going to. Um, it's really important when you get to the graduate degree level. Um, not a, I wouldn't worry about, so I went to a school that said that where you went to school is important. I disagree with that. Uh, it's more about um, you went to school. Where did you go and how did you use that degree? And so I stayed home. And because of staying home, I was able to have these opportunities afforded to me at a much cheaper rate. 
Um, it's about quality of education. So finding those mentors and having that person that's your coach, that's your team, as also as plays a parent as well as knows how to switch into those roles to get um, make you the best in what you want to do. Um, there are very few Native Hawaiian leaders in the field, for at least in engineering, um, as well in other fields. But if you find others that are even in the same boat as you, not even Hawaiian, but Pacific Islanders, or just anybody, help them, we help each other. Um, there's many more strategies for success, is learning to um, code switch. So speaking different languages, when I come to our community, we speak a different way. When I go to academia, I speak a different way. And learning how to turn on and off pigeon, turn on and off English, turn on and off whatever. It's really helpful. Um, as a PhD student, there's a lot of kuleana. Um, you teach because you're being trained to be the next professor to teach the next generation. So I taught fluid mechanics too, which is dynamics. And everyone knows Newton's three laws? Force equals mass times acceleration. You heard of that? That's OK. We deal a lot with Newton. We know him very well. He's a really nice man. Not the fig Newtons. They taste good. But the, the person itself, Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton. And we also do fluid mechanics. So we, we study flow. We study forces, pressures. These are the basic tools that we need to solve um, real world problems. Um, while balancing that, I have to research what I need to produce. And you saw some of what I do with the engineered hydraulic cycle. Um, we also have to find money, always looking for money. You always have to study, you always have to do this. But the most important thing of it all, even though it's last, it's really should be read the other way around, family. So family life, how do I balance family life? Um, when it goes to funerals, when it goes to someone in the hospital, when it goes to, you learn that balance, even if you have to catch a bus which is fun. Um, another key thing is to also stay connected to our communities through outreach and engagement um, and get plugged into like Napuna Eo. Napuna Eo is amazing. If you have keiki from 6 through 12, you might want to consider them doing Napuna Eo programs. I was able to be on the flip side. I was a Napuna Eo student and then flip side became be able to have them host and come to my lab and go, hey, you want to learn pH? And then they play with the pH. They don't know what they're doing, but at least they're exposed to it. And then, oh, they play with TOC, which is total organic carbon. They don't know what they're playing, but you know, they get exposure to this high level quality of education that will help them. Um, we do a lot with Messy Fun, which is we learn about pH and it's messy. Um, when I talk about lifting others as we rise, I'm part of an organization called Hawaiian Island Science, and we work together for the betterment of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, um, the arts, so that includes social science, that includes arts and humanities, and mathematics. And we're gathering all of the Lahui voices at UH Manoa to lift each other as we rise. So you can see us. These are our pubs, so this is what much more kuka kuka, more informal, not the beach, preferably would be beach, but at least we talk, it's a different olelo. Um, we, um, we olelo our science, and we, we ask each other critical questions um, because we want to make each other the best. And we also create open spaces like this. Thank you, Ileana, thank you, Kamehameha Schools, thank you, Christy, to share um, hot button issues in science to our community. Um, some issues that we've looked at is traditional marine resource management. Um, I went home, we did a thing with Maui Engineering, Native Engineering Science and Education Cafe, tied science engineering with um, genealogy, tied science and engineering pathways, different pathways to students to network. Um, we also looked at water resources and climate change, where we get people, we talk for only eight minutes and have five people with five different perspectives. For, so like wind energy, we did a wind energy talk where we had a politician, we had the businessman, we had the community activist against it. We had everyone at the table. This was, you know, hands down, we want to understand each other so we can make our own informed decision as a community about this issue. So we're going to explore other ones. We have two more. I'll let you folks know when we get it. 
um, decide. We also do cultural things like Ava nights, um, re relearning our who we are, and learn that as well. Some take-home messages. I'm about to wrap it up. Um, document what you do is important for the students. Um, there's technologies that are free, like Dropbox. I use this to like every essay that I wrote for a scholarship. I'm I improve it. That's really important. So you don't have to start from scratch every time. Um, also, always having like um, your CV or resume updated every month because you've always been doing crazy things. Um, take pictures with you in it and with people in it is important for your journey when you get older, I think. Not only that, to share with other people, like how I'm doing here. Um, I hope that you become the spring, or what I'd say the resource, um, and give the living waters. I enjoy the ride. I always remember that. Um, I've made a lot of friends and family, um, new family. And I just want to thank everyone that has been here for me. This is all their names, but at least they're on the page. Um, just acknowledge them. Those wearing the lei, I want to acknowledge them. Um, I also wanted to give you folks a gift. Um, can everyone um, look at their hands? Um, what does it look like to you? So we all have kuleana, yeah? So e malami kalalo e kuleana e kipamaya. Remember the invitation, for it gives you the privilege of coming here. What do your hands look like in the shape of, like how my hands up there picture? Some for a heart, whatever. It can also be a land division, like ahupua'a or other ways. Um, can I have like three? Come, Jen. You can. Come. Here, come. Put our hands together. It becomes the moku, right? The island. We are the moku. And if we cut it in half, in cross-sectional area, You can see the island. This is the whole dialect cycle, right? That you saw on the picture. The water comes down. Uwe, Kalanina, Uwe, Kohonu, Ne, Kohonu. This is Vai um, Luna, which is the surface water. What underneath is Vai Lalo, which is subsurface water. So we can think of innovative ways. That's the gift. We have the Kuliana. The Ahupua is in your hands. The land's in your, you are the land. You are the Moku. Um, so Vai Luna, Vai Lalo. Hey, hey, Mao, Ninao, any questions? Thank you.